Hey everyone, it's Andy Kushner, host of The Wedding Biz, sponsored today by Bride Lux, the organization that presents wedding shows and conferences on a global basis. So on The Wedding Biz, I conduct in-depth and revealing interviews of icons of the weddings and event industry, and this is all to provide you with education and inspiration, and I am feeling so full of inspiration because I just got back from almost an entire week in New York City. I started with my girlfriend hanging out in Soho and having drinks and dinner with our good friend Sylvia Weinstock. I am so inspired by Sylvia. She is my role model for aging. You know, I can say this on the show because she talked about it in her presentation at Bride Lux that she's turning 90 this month. 90. And she's got at least as much energy as anyone in this industry. I am not exaggerating. She is just so much fun. And she is really just getting all she can out of life. I, again, just totally my my role model, Sylvia. So during my week in New York, I also had the chance to sit down and interview for a second time, Norma Cohen, always a dynamic interview, a wonderful planner and designer. Also was able to sit down with another planner and designer, Sophia Crocus. It was real interesting to get her story for the first time. And I also sat down with my friend Jordan Kahn, musician and entertainer of Jordan Kahn Orchestras. And so that was especially a good time. Always want to hang with another fellow musician and entertainer. When I came to New York, the main reason that got the whole trip going was because I was choosing my own panel members to moderate a panel for Bride Lux at their conference in New York City. And it was really, really exciting. And before I give you some more details on that, let me mention that if you missed last week's episode, it was with Alejandra Poupel, a planner and designer out of Paris, France. Alejandra is a bowl of energy. She was really fun. So if you missed it, you should check it out from last week. So today's episode, um, I was asked by Bride Lux to handpick a panel to speak at their recent bridal show and conference at the Intercontinental New York Barclay in Manhattan. And I was also tasked with coming up with a topic that would benefit both industry pros as well as bridal couples. So I chose a topic that comes up in almost every one of my interviews over the past two and a half years on the wedding biz and decided to call it industry pro and client, the importance of personal connection. And this is, you know, obviously the connection that we need to have uh, between ourselves and the industry and our couples. And I chose in order to talk about this, you know, how do they do it and why is it so important, were Sylvia Weinstock, Cece Johnson, and Christian Oth. Now, during my introduction to the crowd, which you're about to hear, I recorded it live, I gave the impressive bios of each panelist, as well as talked about why I chose this particular topic. So, enjoy my conversation with Sylvia Weinstock, Christian Auth, and Cece Johnson. Hey, everybody. How's everyone doing? Thank you. You stuck it out all day. Give yourself a round of applause. Yeah. Oh, my you. God. This is the best crowd. This is the best crowd. So the reason for all these microphones and cables and everything like that is that I'm the creator and the host of the Wedding Biz Podcast. Has anyone heard of it? Anyone listen? Oh, cool. All right. Um, and we are actually recording right now as I speak, as we speak. And so any applause and yelling and noise that you make, you can say you were on the show. All so, right. So, yeah. <laughs> so, see... Everybody wants to get that recognition. So, uh, so we're basically recording this for The Wedding Biz. It'll come out in the next month or two. Um, the Wedding Biz, for those of you who don't know about it, it's a podcast in which I interview who I believe are icons of the business and who I believe are the next generation icons. And I like to take a real deep dive into it and really get people's backstories and where did the passion spark? And, and you know, did, what was the fear that they felt? And what did it take to start their businesses? And I, I like to get into the emotional part of it, too. I think I'm like a therapist, right? Also, partly. We're like that, too. Wait a minute. Well, you talk about passion. Passion. Do you, do you mind if I keep that in the bedroom? <laughs> the, the rest is She's a commitment. She's going there already. <laughs> yes. Ladies and gentlemen. The rest is a so commitment. Good. I am going if, if you don't know who these people are, I'm going to introduce them in a minute. I'm sure you do. So yeah, on the podcast, I like to, we have uh, interviews that come out every single week. Every single person on this panel has been on the show. Dynamic interviews. Let me tell you. I mean, incredible. So I, I suggest I'm not 
promoting this. I, you just should get on the show to listen to each one of these people's stories. It's really fascinating. Um, so let me introduce each of the panelists. First of all, next to me, uh, one of the great event industry entrepreneurs and a true innovator. Uh, she began her business designing cakes known as edible art in the middle of her life and was in business for 36 years. And I can say it because she already said it in her presentation earlier that she's about to be 90. So <laughs> I'll tell you what, Sylvia is a true uh, role model for me. Um, she closed down her business two or three years ago. And her client list includes, as Sylvia said, people like names. She, her client list includes Oprah, Robert De Niro, Martha Stewart, Ralph Lauren, uh, Jennifer Lopez, the Kennedys, Rockefellers, Clintons. That's just the beginning, the tip of the iceberg. She's had clientele all over the world. Ladies and gentlemen, Sylvia Weinstock. <laughs> wait, 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 we're not done. Oh, all right. <laughs> so, uh, did you get your vodka, Sylvia? Yes. It's right here. Uh, all right. Um, so, Cheers. yeah, you want to hear an incredible interview? Look up Sylvia Weinstock's interview. Trust me. Um, next to Sylvia, uh, CC Johnson, founder and creator, uh, creative director of CC New York. She's been called by Harper's Bazaar an invitation design icon. Her acclaimed design studio has won numerous international awards, including the prestigious Modern Bride Trendsetter Award. She was named New York Magazine's expert stationer and was, has won successive Best Invitation Design Awards, leading to her induction into the Knott's Wedding Hall of Fame. CeCe's fashion-forward design style and sophisticated aesthetic have led her to be named by Tori Birch as a woman to watch and has been called by Anna Wintour of Vogue's Magazines, a favorite designer. Ladies and gentlemen, CeCe Johnson. Thank you for having me. Yes, and next to CeCe is founder and creative director of Christian Auth Studio. Uh, Christian is a world-renowned editorial photographer who has pioneered a distinctly um, evocative and authentically emotional editorial style through his approach to photography. His experience over the past two decades in fashion, photojournalism, portraiture, advertising, still life, and celebrity portraits combines into a singular method that has come to define the aesthetic of contemporary wedding photography. Named one of the world's 10 best wedding photographers by Harper's Bazaar, Christian's client list includes actress Amanda Peet, former executive producer of Sex and the City, ABC News anchor Melanie Bloom, and many prestigious clients from the entertainment, fashion, and journalism industries. Ladies and gentlemen, Christian Ott. <laughs> now, I already see that C he has, CC has moved the microphone away. I'm bringing it right back to you. Oh, shoot. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> They're like right in our face. It's very close. Yeah, well. Yeah, we want everybody okay? that's supposed hey, to be, right? Listen, yeah. people all over the world are going to be listening to this. Uh, no, no pressure. So, <laughs> um, so as you all know, this, well, I want to explain why I came to choose this particular topic. I've conducted over 150 interviews so far, and one of the themes or motifs that keeps coming up, no matter who I interview on the show, we're talking everybody you can think of has been on this, from both an industry pro perspective as well as from, for bridal couples, it's all about connecting, connection with each other and doing it on as deep and a personal level as possible. And you're about to learn why this is so important. And hopefully industry pros in the room can gain some additional insight, uh, which you can use in your own businesses. And for bridal couples in the room, you can learn what you can do to facilitate more of this connection and why it's going to help you on your wedding day. So I'd like to know how many people in the industry are in the room today. Okay. It looks like about 50% and couples... And uh, a bunch of people are not admitting who they're with. <laughs> okay. That's okay. We have a couple. couple. That's all right. So this is going to be very kind of interactive, very conversational on this panel. Everyone feel free to just jump in when you want. Don't have to wait for me. But a friend of mine who I just had on the show, uh, Christina Matucci, who's the executive director with David Beam. I'm sure many of you know of her. Quite a dynamic speaker. She was on the show. She came up with this term that I love, that I thought really sums up what we're talking about, and the term is audacious transparency, audacious transparency. And what we mean by that is if we can be clear about our own story, if we could bring vulnerability and be transparent with our clients, it helps for couples to then trust us in the industry and also to be able to be more vulnerable and genuine themselves, which helps us, which we're going to get into, to be able to more custom curate an experience for them. And I have a music company, too, called Kushner Entertainment. And I admit, for years, I was just more focused on, let me get the business and do a great job. 
It was later that I learned what a difference it makes for me to connect with my clients. And then my clients are getting a better experience. And that's what this session is all about. So Sylvia, I'd like to ask, you are well known for being very direct and blunt. Anyone here see, hear her presentation earlier today? I mean, I love it. And so, and Jess Gordon, who spoke earlier, same thing, really out there. And so how do you feel about this whole topic, Sylvia? I mean, really being able to be direct and put yourself out there with your clients and what that means. Well, first of all, I have to tell you, I like people. And I'm perfectly willing to tell them something about myself so that you bond with your client. The moment you can open yourself up to them, they will respond and they will open themselves to you. And then you start a relationship. And then you, you will find that there's a loyalty in that relationship. And not only do they want your product, they want you. And they enjoyed being with you, and they remember you, and they send you thank you notes because you're willing to tell them something about yourself. That uh, I will tell you something about me breast cancer at 50, lung cancer at 86, 90 this month. And I'm not done. I am not done. So I am willing to go out and talk and tell you about w women who are entering a field that is difficult. Uh, food industry was run by a lot of men. Women are starting to invade it. There's a lot of prejudice about it. But gung-ho, if you're good, you'll win. Yeah, yeah, I love that. And you'll love your clients, and your clients will love you because you're open, you're honest with them, you talk to them, you talk about the fact that this they come to you as a second wedding. What happened to the first wedding? Oh, it was difficult. Well, aren't they all? So you share a lot of things with people, and when they walk out, you get a hug and a kiss, and 20 years later, you run into them in the street, and they say, I always remembered our meeting, and I remember the cake. <laughs> <laughs> Cece, what do you think about this whole, in terms of your process with clients and really getting to know them and how it affects your work, what would you say about that, generally speaking? I mean, I definitely agree with what Sylvia said. I also just think, how can we create for someone if we don't really know them, you know? Like, how can you really get inspired and go deep and, and be passionate about your work if it's just surface like if there's nothing there like I will continually ask questions and dig and dig and dig until I find something that's like okay yeah that makes sense that makes sense for me as your designer and that makes sense for you as our, as my client that you know is going to be I'm in my line of invitation design we're creating their message to the world right that's like first time as their couple to really present their best foot forward to their most cherished people in their lives right mm. and I think a lot of times they don't know what they don't know, right? And I think it's our job as the experts to not sit in a meeting that they're already nervous about and be like, well, what do you want? You know, just tell me what you want. Because I know like I'm, as much as I'm a very creative person, I get very overwhelmed with certain things like interior design. I'm like, I don't know. Like, I, it's not my expertise. Like, I want you to share with me. But you can't really know what that target is until you've actually gotten to know them. Does that make sense? So I think digging and not being afraid and, and, and definitely not being afraid if, if they're telling you something that you're like, I don't know what they're talking about. Or like pretending like, oh yeah, I know exactly that venue or that. I'm like, wait, let me just open up the picture. Like, let me see your wedding dress. Let me look. And then something might spark an inspiration in my mind that I could dig a little deeper. And then they're like, yes, yes, yes. And before you know it, they're, you know, like Sylvia said, like your best friend and you're just created this really incredible deep relationship that then as an artist pushes you to do better. Yeah, you want to get to know what their taste level is like. What do they like? Yeah. I mean, some people hate certain colors. Some people hate glitz. Some people love it. So they want to open something that reflects them. Yeah. And it's your job to dig, dig deep and find out who they are and what they are. Exactly. You too. <laughs> yeah. She just captures it. <laughs> oh, well, I'm the, lucky, I'm the lucky guy. I'm the lucky guy who gets to photograph uh, you, the, the product of your cre creativity as well as the product of, of your Sylvia. And uh, a lot of, I think over 50% of my weddings that I shoot is 
the designs of a CC. It's like you get uh, it's kind of yeah. He it's gets to see them half dressed. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's part of their album. <laughs> yeah, that's a challenge. <laughs> so uh, yeah, so as far as as, as photography is concerned, I mean, it, it's uh, that is it's ultra important because. Uh, the client is also the subject, and uh, you know, I need to I need to have a good, a really great connection with the client, uh, with with the bride and the groom. As a photographer, I uh, tend to see the bride more on her wedding day than her groom. And uh, I mean, think about that for a second. And uh, I'm there in the boudoir when she's getting dressed, and uh, I'm getting grabbing all these uh, th- these shots. And it's so, for me, it's like it's it's it's. Really, really important to meet, to, to ha- create a great connection with the client, and that is in having meetings, uh, making sure that I meet the client beforehand, and and like another meeting before, and and, and, and having some chats before that. And um, I always ask them like, what kind of photography coverage do you want? And I always say like, well, we want what you do, like this authentic coverage and everything. So, but in order to get that, I need to get to know them. They need to get used to me. So that there's a great energy between us, and uh, so they're almost like becoming friends. And uh, some some of them are friends, actually become friends after the wedding, you know. And like this, there's a once you have this like really really strong connection, it uh, really it makes all the difference. Yeah. I wonder if each of you could talk about the process, like if you have any particular way of going about this. I mean, because you're sitting down with a couple who is feeling really vulnerable, right? And I'm sure that, you know, as excited as they are, there's also some anxieties that they're feeling. How do you open up the conversation? How do you break the ice to be able to get so deep, you know, low and connect with them? How do you do that? Well, we, when we start our, um, when we do this first interview, when the client comes in, uh, it's, uh, we discussed this in the studio, uh, if the uh, photographer doesn't have confidence you know, like, uh, then the client won't have the confidence. So it's, yeah. it's basically about is establishing trust. My clients or my, the, 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 the couples, they need to feel that I have the ability to capture them on the wedding day. Yeah. And also, they will confide in you that don't photograph table 10. Those are the in-laws cousins that we don't talk to. <laughs> so you get to know a I lot of that. I get a lot of like yes. crazy, yeah. crazy shots. That's it. That's that's what they. <laughs> but if they're not comfortable, then your photos are going to reflect that. So it's yeah. so important. Yeah. So they really need to be able to trust me to do a good job. That's and absolutely. They, they actually need to trust me to make them look great. Right. And that is that's that's an ability of a photographer. And the way I know this is when uh, I get photographed. When I, when I get photographed myself, and I, there's a photographer. Sure. Uh, like in, in front of me, behind the camera, and you know, there's there's a handful of photographers who will let photograph me. Then the rest of them, they they don't know how to photograph yeah. me. I'm not the easiest person to photograph. <laughs> yeah, you know? but it's but if I feel that this photographer kind of gets it, you know, and this is like it's something you can't express in words, really, like how that works. Uh, then it's then then you then then you you relax. Yeah. And this is my entire goal for. The uh, you know bride to be a bride on the wedding day, to be in the moment, to not think about the yeah. small details and all that stuff. I always say it's like our first date. I don't I didn't mean to cut you off, but I no, just no. for me it's like I always sit them down. They they definitely have a bit of trust to come right if you're meeting face to face or if you're talking on the phone. And I always say like you're this is your like our first date. We're just going to get to know each other. Like you are not responsible to be a designer. Like that's my job. That's my talent, and that's my gift to you. So take that pressure off. All I want you to do is just be honest with me. Mm. And you will never hurt my feelings. Like, the more honest you are, the better. Because a lot of times they're like, oh, I'm too afraid because all of these are your beautiful works. And, you know, it's pretty, but it's not for me. But, oh, but, you know, and I'm like, who cares? Like, stop sugarcoating it. Just be honest. Mm -hmm. And the more direct you are and the more we can, like, get to what is really making your heart tick, then boom. Like, I'm already, like, ideas are flowing and things are starting to come out. And that's in the case that if the client can actually verbalize. Sorry, this sounds funny. But sometimes, and we can all admit, there are clients that are like, cannot talk. Like they're just very quiet Mm -hmm. and very shy. And if that's the case, I'll ask my questions, you know, like just getting, getting to know them. Like it doesn't even have to be about the wedding. They could just tell them about, about who they are, what colors they like, what's their home like, anything like that. If they can't go there, then I just start making suggestions. I'll just start bringing out stuff. And and as a creator, you have to kind of 
put yourself out on this awkward, uncomfortable limb to be like, what about this? Well, I'm thinking this. And you might have no idea what the target is, but if you try, then suddenly they're like, yes, no, yes, no. And then you can get to a good place. Yeah, for me, I mean, it's your job to have the methodology right. to find out what the client's taste is and what, 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 like what would make them happy. Right. Yeah. Because the nerves are going and they don't exactly. know the terminology. They yeah. have no thing, idea. Do they come with a crowd when... For cake tastings, they come with a crowd. They come oh, yes. they with the mother, the father, the aunt, the oh, bridesmaid. Yeah. The groom comes because he wants food too, <laughs> and so does the bride. So sometimes you have six or eight people. I think one of the most memorable ones was, was <laughs> three, three mothers. The original birth mother, the second wife, and the current third <laughs> wife came with the daughter. And I have to tell you, these three mothers were terrific. But very rarely do I get a bride alone for a tasting. I get the entourage because it's a free meal. That's true. So I think you and know, you have and to you listen and, to what yeah. the bride really wants, not all the right. And you and you dig gallery. and you dig in <laughs> to see what it is it they want, whatever. Every once in a while, you will get a mother and a daughter that have a fight. Oh. where the daughter wants something and the mother wants he something wants else. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but then the mother <laughs> always has a retort, and her retort is, I'm paying for it. <laughs> so that happens, and I'm also very nice to the daddies that come because they're paying for it. So, you know, you have to pick your people, but I get a crowd. Yeah, no, We bring I more to and you probably get a crowd too. Yeah, we do. want to know we, what they do. We do. So, but sometimes uh, we don't get that crowd, and it's just the only one person there. I was like, oh my God, where's, where's the guy? You know? That's yeah, easy. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I want to add too, I mean, for me, you know, what do I do to break the ice to get, whether it's a crowd or one person, to start really talking and feeling comfortable with me? I finally figured this out. I act as if I already know them, like I'm already a friend. I mean, so I do feel like it's up to us to put ourselves out there fully and be vulnerable in that sense because then they're going to respond, right? Do you feel that? Yeah, and if you can set expectations and set the stage, like here's how it's going to go and like, again, relax. If you mm. don't have to figure it out, or, but just like we're going to have a good time. Like well, it's okay. In other words, you're sharing with them yeah. your level and opening it up to them. And when you show them different invitations and they say, I like this, I don't like like that I do like this mm -hmm. so in other words you narrow the field yep. and then you look at your client and you look at the client to see who they are what do they look like what do they like how do what's their lifestyle yep, yep. Well, I, I also have to say it's kind of I think we all have offices here in New York and I think it starts with the environment um, not me I'm retired <laughs> yeah. Okay. I know you're not anymore. You know, <laughs> but uh, but so having good. having uh, you know, if you have the luxury to have an office in New York, or like or wherever you are, just create a very warm and welcoming space that uh, when you come into it, it exudes the creativity that uh, you know. The, it's not corporate. You feel comfortable. Yeah, exactly. You're not like in a shared office or a Starbucks. Or Do you something. want me to lend you my living room? Oh, I. Uh, I, I, I'll take you up. That, that might be a point. <laughs> you can't pass that up. No, but you, no, you, I, no, you want to make them very comfortable. It's, they don't want to frighten them off. Yeah, yeah. We actually uh, decided that, yeah, we like for years we had them sit on on a sort of a conference table to to meet with them. But then we did a whole couch setup, like a living room couch setup, and that was like just much more comfortable. Yeah, yeah. and everybody just sort of sits back into the sofa and everything. And then that that That's just good. really works well in terms of like having just having a conversation. And uh, often, I mean, I always have slideshows ready to show my work and everything, but they kind of have already seen it. So oftentimes, I don't even show my photos because they've seen them. It's just and the connection it's, with it's you. It's the connection. It's the conversation. And um, well, they didn't pick your name out of the phone book. They came. They came to you because of book? your What's name, <laughs> because because of your name and your reputation, and they know they're coming to a professional. Yeah, and, exactly. Yeah. And that's very important. Yeah, that also brings me to another uh, angle on this, another perspective, which is defining our brand. You know, if we're putting ourselves out there. Uh, I know from my own experience, that's also a way not only to differ differentiate myself from others, from competition in the market, but it is defining my brand as who I am. And so it helps the client know if we're really right for each other. Do any of you, do you ever get to the point where you feel it is not right with a client? You're not really connecting and you, you, you're you not comfortable continuing with them. Does that ever come up? Oh, yeah. 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 We've had Can you speak to that? Do you want to go first? <laughs> sure. Uh, That's a sensitive subject. We, it's a, yeah, yeah, sure. It's because it happens. And uh, we, 
you know, it was like a, there, there was a client that came in and uh, she was like, she was an hour late and uh, she was disrespectful to my staff and, uh, you know, for whatever reason. And uh, the meeting just went on, you know, and I, 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 was, I, was, in, I was in the office, I wasn't in, in the meeting and I heard all about it. And I, I asked the photographer and like, do you really want to book this client? And he said, no, I'll make it happen. I'll, I'll make her happy and everything. And uh, lo and behold, come the, the, after the wedding, she was unhappy. We had to do like, we had to jump through hoops to, to make her happy at, uh, after that. So that was one very, very difficult client that uh, shouldn't have happened. And uh, it's, uh, it's, it, you know, it happens to us every, every year or se every second year, there's like one terrible client that we shouldn't have taken on. But sometimes we, we can't predict it. But you, you know? also don't know. Like yeah. I've had plenty of clients that were amazing. Like I was going to go to the wedding. We were like BFFs. And then she turned psycho, like legitimately, <laughs> I'm not, I love all my clients. I really do. But she went berserk, Marcus. like, mm -hmm. like make no sense. Like, it's like she ordered it in red. We gave it to her in red. She's like, who would have ordered this in red? This is ridiculous. I hate it. And I'm like, you signed off on it and it's in red hmm. and I'm so sorry. But what do you do? Like, what do you do with that? Like, you know? And so. And those clients take all the energy. And. All of it. And yeah. every single one of my team members and myself included that poured our heart and soul into making this person happy were left completely empty and miserable. And at the end of the day, you know, I'm like, ner like nervous, like sh goosebumps talking about this out loud because we try so hard to make every single client happy, but they're just not happy. And no matter what you do, it's just there's no pleasing. They're not happy. Go, like, they, I'm they done with weddings. This crazy world. They're, they're, they're basically not happy and people. You have they're, to be they're honest they're... with them, and mm -hmm. it's, yeah. you have to be so strong. And I just was like, this is why we have our processes. You signed off on it. We have it in writing. Her husband's a lawyer. I'm like, talk to your husband or your fiance. Like, you know, like that's the reason why we have these contracts. And even that, it just still was crazy town. And you, at that point, you're just like, maybe we're not the right fit for you. And you're welcome to keep screaming at me. She was like, I'll go to Marshall's, not Marshall's, Michael's, the art store and put oh a God. Sharpie on this and it'll be better. And I'm like, all right, uh, good yeah. you're yeah, we've just a wonderful, stuff, yeah. happy yeah, person. Please, no one put this on social. Um, oh, sorry. It's going on well, social. It's public. <laughs> okay, I didn't say anything. <laughs> well, but, but, but it happens. It happens. But... But that's it's all. Okay. Pa that's all part of. <laughs> Those are all going to be. But you have to remember you something. We're in the service business, and th and this is a very important thing. You may yes, like the client. All, you yeah. may not like the client. It has nothing to do with it. You're in the service business, and you are. You have employees. You have a payroll. I mean, you're in business. So aside from that, let's get to the point of making the client happy. You cannot make everybody happy. I have, you know this, that's why therapists make a good living too. <laughs> so True. you, there are always going to be issues, but you do the very best you can and you get as close to perfection for them as you can. And I have to tell you that photography is something very lasting. People will keep their photographs forever. I looked at the picture of my wedding cake with Ben. I have it in the living room and that was 70 years ago. And it's something that you will always keep. So photography is a memory that you will always have. And you need a photographer who is sensitive to you and can put that in something permanent that you can hang on the wall 70 years later and say, weren't we cute? <laughs> and in terms of invitations, people save their invitations because they're beautiful. It goes into an album that they will hold forever. It represents so, their personality as well. Yeah. This is yeah. true. So you're both in a, a very special field. You can't erase the, the photography once it's done, and you can't tear up the invitation when it's done. It's done, finished. So they have to, you have a finite thing. Yes. Mine is you eat it and you can remember it. <laughs> and we take pictures of it. Yes. <laughs> you know, yeah. I'm also I'm also thinking for planners. How many planners are in the room? Yeah, I mean, yeah. you know, for planners, well, all of us have to live with our clients for potentially a year, a year and a half. Planners in particular, oh my God, right? It, it sometimes oh, yeah. you're in a daily. So you've I, got so to be don't comfortable. Don't envy planners. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're supposed to facilitate. But there's nothing, you. no amount of work uh, yes, that can be done yes. if this person is toxic and 
you know, putting you in a very bad place. You have to have an honest conversation. I, I just think it's like, I can continue working for you, but this is, I'm the professional and this is how it is. And if you are willing to cooperate and follow why you, you know, you hired me in the first place, then great. We're going to create something great for you. But if not, if we're at different of a crossroads, then it's totally fine. Like we should just part our ways and also, you'll do your thing. You're very also, civilized. But what, one, thing that, one thing you said about this is like, I think that it's very, very important that you are like as a company when you, when you set it up and like how, you have scripts for all your communication and you have processes in place so that you, like your entire staff knows how things are done and uh, you have manuals for your staff so, and you, you, you train them really well. And because if only one thing is off, the client can turn against you. Yeah, for sure. And uh, it's so so having good good very 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 well thought processes in in your business makes the client feel more comfortable about you. And also, it's a bit of a wall. Like if they like that, they can't penetrate if they want to go crazy around you. You know. So. Look, <laughs> the wedding is a a process. The moment that little girl was born. And mother took her to Disneyland, and she got a tutu dress. <laughs> she wanted that bigger. So eventually she grows up and is now a size 12. However, this is the dream of a whole unit. The family looks forward to a wedding. It's a big deal. Let me tell you that. So I have, having been to uh, several weddings on my own and having a grandson get married, which was really wonderful, but you bring to it your heart and your love. The people that are going to be ultra critical are not the people you'll ever satisfy. They go back to their shrink at 400 bucks an hour. But I will tell you this. The wedding is supposed to be a binding, wonderful event that unites two families. Hopefully, it's permanent. If it's not, they move on to another wedding. You get to re re repeat business. Oh, How yeah. And I like repeat business, by the <laughs> way. It pays the bills. It's not just the money. It's your personal integrity, and it's your relationship with the client. Definitely. It is the money, too, because we, <laughs> we all like to go out and drink. And, you know, this is mine, by the way. This is my birthday gift to Cheers. you all. It's vodka. Oh, <laughs> happy I'm happy vodka birthday, drinker. Sylvia. Happy birthday. But I have to say, life is... Life is full of surprises and wonderful things. It is to teach our brides and grooms and their families to know that this is a wonderful thing. There was a wedding that was being held at one of the hotels. The cake was being delivered on a Saturday afternoon. The cake was ready to go at 3 in the afternoon to be delivered and put on the table. And I got a call from the hotel saying, the wedding's canceled. 300 people... Look at all that money. Gone. It's canceled. It's all paid for. The cake was going to be paid for, guaranteed by the hotel. The parents had a fight that on Friday, which continued into Saturday morning, and the wedding is off. So you're talking about $500,000. Now, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm a $1.98 kid that went to Hunter College for free. So to spend $500,000 and not get anything out of it, for me, that's painful. But you do have incidents like that periodically. I never saw it in the bride and groom. But somehow, they allowed peripheral relationships to get into the mess. Oh, yeah. Oh, I've seen that. Or sometimes the father takes the basket of the money and puts it in his pocket and forgets he's supposed to share it. <laughs> but, you know, you've seen... Oh, I, 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 deal with, I deal with this a lot. I mean, I had one wedding where um, the father the father of the groom had three wives, I mean, wives, consecutive wives, and, uh, you know, and they all could, wives, not, could not... Could not at one not, time. Not at one time, no. <laughs> but they all that could not stand that each other. <laughs> and, uh, you know, so there was, there was all this speculation if, like, wife number two was going to show up because nobody could stand her. And uh, it, was, it, it, it had the, the worst energy, and it really affected the couple. And, and you remember this? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, it was very, it was very tough to get him like one portrait out of them. You know, it's like, yeah. But that can happen. I mean, but that doesn't. Thank God, that's not the norm. You know, those yes. are those are the real like that's those are the exceptions to the rule. Yeah, the yeah. norm is happy. That, the norms are happy. It's yeah. fulfilling a dream. Yes. Does anyone have any questions? I mean, look at the panel you've got here. This is an opportunity, Go and ahead. I'm going to repeat. Throw questions. it to us. I'm going to repeat <laughs> questions. Oh, yeah. 
I'm going to repeat them out loud so it's on the show and everyone can hear. But anyone have a question? This is don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Yeah. <laughs> the first one to go. Somebody? Okay, I have a question. <laughs> <laughs> okay. If I don't have a lot of money, can I have a smaller album with your work? Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Well, it's so, relative, isn't it? How yeah. much I mean, is a small yeah, amount so, of money? Yeah, I mean, it's really tiny. I don't have to have the, <laughs> I don't have, I don't have to have the encyclopedia. Huh? It doesn't have to be the encyclopedia. It could just be a small yeah, album. Yeah, um, I mean, okay, so at our studio, um, we, you know, I have... I, I shoot weddings myself, but uh, you know we represent other photographers, and uh, they shoot pretty like very similar to my style, but some have their own style, and uh, we have sort of uh, we have an overarching studio style. So we have we have uh, all sorts of photographers at all different budget levels. Yeah, and Cece, you do too. Yeah. So yeah. you also have a range of prices. Yes, we have. I mean, for years it was always our, what I call the couture. Uh, service where we're creating from scratch and now we've launched what's called CC Collection so it's more of a ready to order concept where you can choose from existing designs and mix and match and make it your own and it's a lower price point as well as faster turnaround times and like it's really great but you still get the custom our white glove CC signature service and the quality and everything is still the same so it's really great you're just not starting from scratch or tapping into our imaginations and blank sheet of paper to sketch mm -hmm. and create and one of a kind completely original concept. So Sylvia, I have a question for you. So um, you have quote unquote retired, but you are a ball of energy and, and, <laughs> and you love, love being out there. What are you planning to do? I have now? not retired from life. Yeah, that's I just oh, retired from baking one. a cake. Yeah. I, good. Are you kidding? I'm very busy. No, I'm, I'm, I'm talking to youngsters. There are some kids in the building that I live that want to make cupcakes with me. I want to travel. I want to tell people that age is not a deterrent, that you can do anything you want at any time in your life. Who would ever think someone in chemotherapy and breast cancer at the age of 50 would start a cake business? Right. And who at the age of 90 is willing to go on a safari in Africa next month? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> life is wonderful and the events that they do these are hallmarks in a book of life born birth schooling marriage children they document it her invitations are something one saves his photographs are something not only do you put them in a book better than a book hang them on the wall so you look at them every day. So that these are things that we live with and give us joy because life can be wonderful if that's how you look at it. Get up every day and say, today's a terrific day. There are people that wake up every day and the challenge is, ugh, forget it. So you want to get as much as you can as long as you live. And the beauty of a wedding and the beauty of a celebration, and this is a celebration of an ongoing relationship, mm -hmm. as we call it, these are marked by the photographs that you look at all the time, the invitations and the responses that you look at all the time. You say, these were just hallmarks and beauty. And, you know, you remember wonderful things if you're of that mind said and if you're not you better get there <laughs> mm. sure. more. well i want to thank everybody for coming and sticking this out i know we went over one more time again everyone sylvia weinstock <laughs> cc johnson thank you can i say one more thing sure can we get a discount if he if he the lady he's dating becomes more serious we get a discount <laughs> Oh, I'm Jewish. I want a discount. Yeah. <laughs> and everyone, Christian off. Yes. Thank you. And I'm Andy Kushner, and you've been listening to The Wedding Biz. And I want to thank James and Maya from Bridal Lux for putting on such a wonderful show. Let's give them a round of applause. And I want to thank the audience. Yep. We'll I want to thank the audience, the audience yes, thank for you. your thank interest you. in something that we create that brings happiness to the world, and we certainly need it now. Yes, yes thank you all for coming. Yes, thank, thank you. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> thank, thank you. you.
Thank you for listening to my conversations through the panel of Bride Lux with Sylvia Weinstock, Christian Auth, and Cece Johnson. Be sure to check out the site of Bride Lux at bridelux.com and that of Sylvia Weinstock's at sylviaweinstock.com. Cece Johnson's is ccnewyork.com. And Christian Auth's is christianauthstudio.com. All of this can be found in the show notes and at our website at theweddingbiz.com. And if you enjoyed this episode, which I certainly expect that you did, please share it with your friends and colleagues. That's how people can find the show. Would also love if you go to iTunes or wherever you get your podcast from and give a top review and rating. That would also mean so much to me. I would appreciate that very much. And so, given the nature of today's episode, I will not be having a follow-up episode on the next level. And so, I will return next Monday with another new episode. And this one is going to be with Bruce Russell, a wonderful, wonderful planner and designer based out of London, who is also the co-star of a popular TV show, My Big Day, Home or Away. So, be sure to follow us on Instagram at The Wedding Biz. One more time, we want to thank our sponsor, Bride Lux. You could find them at bridelux.com. Again, that's bridelux.com. And we'll catch you next week on The Wedding Bits. Wedding Bits.